Okay, the results are in. The Republicans took the House, and when campaigning, they were very excited about stopping the orgy of spending. We'll practice fiscal restraint, they said, but will they? I'm not so sure. A main reason I'm a libertarian is that I've come to believe that what's best for people is limited government. During my life, neither Republicans nor Democrats were good for that. Both increased spending and regulation. But maybe this time will be different. Because this time, some candidates talked a lot about limiting government's powers. In 40 years of reporting, I can't remember when I heard that from politicians who had a chance of being elected. Well, that's not exactly true. There was one, and he joins us now from his office in Clute, Texas. Congressman Ron Paul won re-election this time, again, 76% to 24%. Ron... Welcome. And you were saying these things when Thank no you. one else was saying it. And they called you, you're a Dr. No, you're an obstructionist. Must have been <laughs> awful for you. Well, I expected it, so it didn't bother me too much. I've always been amazed that uh, they've tolerated me as well as they have. My wife always helped me out on that because they had call me Dr. No, and it sounds so negative because I think liberty is very positive. But she says, just tell them that you spell no, K-N-O-W. So uh, we, we just marched on and tried to do the things that we thought were right. And I, I think in some ways we've been vindicated. The country uh, certainly is talking about it. We don't see the definite move toward liberty, but a lot more people are talking talking about it and one thing for sure the people are upset with the status quo so I see it as an opportunity and hopefully our message will sink in and what do you see in this week's election results you you're happy obviously that your son congratulations is now a senator mm -hmm. what else is this good for liberty it is because they're recognizing the problem and they are recognizing that the uh, status quo has to be changed and a lot of people had to be put out of office. That is very, very good. But uh, what is being offered is a big question. You know, I was excited about 1980s election, uh, 1994 and the year 2000, thinking that maybe the conservative uh, libertarian types in the Republican Party would uh, uh, make a, a significant change, but it, it never happened. But one thing that really disappointed me in the campaign, uh, this campaign is they weren't really involved in personal liberty, the Patriot Act, searches without warrants, torture, preventive war, and all the things going on. They never talked about foreign policy. And they called themselves fiscal conservatives, and they spend a trillion dollars a year on managing an empire. I mean, you're not going to solve your problem that way. You can't tinker around with cutting food stamps for the poor and think you're going to solve this problem. We have to change our attitude about the role of government. We can't be the policemen of the world. We shouldn't be policing personal lifestyles. And we certainly shouldn't be, you know, running the economy. We have to have those attitudes changed or there's no hope that we'll solve our problems. So are you disappointed in your own son? Because he has said, my dad would eliminate half the federal departments. I'm trying to nibble around the edges. Well, he's, he's been challenged pretty well, and I think at times that's fine. That's what we're involved in. But, you know, they came down pretty hard on him, and he hadn't even cast a vote yet. So I'm going to give him a break. I'm going to wait to see how the votes <laughs> right. go. And it's, I think he's going to be, I think he's going to do very well, and I think he knows what it's all about, and he's very principled, and he knows the libertarian message. He knows what capitalism is all about. So I think we should remain optimistic about how he does. Let me bring in two other people who know what capitalism is all about. Uh, Matt Welch is editor of Reason Magazine. Kimberly Strassel writes opinion columns for the Wall Street Journal. So what do you guys say? What do the election results mean for freedom? Well, I mean, I think it was a huge victory for the possibility of economic freedom. We got a lot of candidates who came in who were talking about the right things, limited government, less spending, lower taxes. But now we're going to see if they can actually put it into action. And that's, that's the hard part. And they're going to have a very tough time. You know, I've already seen one of the interesting interviews has already come out with President Obama. They said, well, what are you going to work with Republicans on? He goes, oh, well, you know, I think that highway reauthorization bill is a good first thing we can do. So, you know, he, he's going to be out there. He's going to win them over yeah. with pork for their... Yeah. That's highway. going to be the big trap. It's going to be, well, let's see how committed you are to those limited government spending principles when we can send back some pork to your district.
Matt Welch, Reason Magazine. It's always a good day when uh, politicians get fired. And uh, it's, yes. it's, it's even better when they get fired for the right reason, which many people did uh, this week. Uh, and we're getting to a, a place where we do have uh, more of a doctor no uh, situation. Uh, the word is repudiation. That was what this was about. Or refudiation. Right? Refudiation. <laughs> Dr. Paul, your thoughts on that? You know, I think there will be this big effort uh, to work together and to compromise, and I think that is very dangerous. And that doesn't mean that you're rigid and you don't work with people, but if you work for compromise, which means the moderate approach is somebody proposed an increase of $100 billion and you settle for 50 and they say that's a compromise. The only way we should work in compromise is if you propose nothing and somebody else wants 100 and you settle for 50. I was disappointed when I looked at the smaller results after the excitement over the house changing and some of these ballot measures proposition 19 to legalize marijuana went down in california restricting eminent domain abuse defeated in nevada getting bureaucrats in san francisco to pay a little more for their own health benefits defeated reducing the sales tax in massachusetts defeated there were others it's like Libertarians are getting killed. And don't forget well, Prop 25 in California, too, which allowed, uh, it reduced the threshold to raise taxes from a two-thirds vote in the legislature to a 50% vote, which is... A and in California, the vote to say, yes, we want to have these global warming rules that will make no difference, but will kill our economy. Yes. But, John, well, think about where those are based. You're talking about Taxachusetts over here, one coast. California, another coast. I mean, these are not exactly bastions of freedom anymore these days. And in the case of California and Prop 19 in particular, the revolution didn't happen, but it got started in a way. In 2012, we're going to see legalization. Prop 19, for those of you who don't know, is marijuana. So legalized marijuana. Uh, we're going to see the propositions for legalization knocking through the front door liberty uh, in Colorado, in probably Nevada, South Dakota in 2012. And it's going to have a, a definite impact on among other things, the presidential, I think, uh, uh, race in 2012 with these ballot measures. Who are the new freedom leaders now in Congress? Who, who impresses you? Dr. Paul, let me go to you first, besides your son, of course, who <laughs> I assume... Yeah, we, we, we won't, we won't uh, be biased and pick him. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the one candidate uh, now, uh, Congressman uh, Justin Amash from Michigan, it, not much was said at the national uh, level. I think he's going to be one of my very close allies. So I would like to see him become a congressional leader. I'm embarrassed I hadn't even heard of him, so that's interesting. He posts <laughs> all of his votes well, you, on you'll Facebook like, you'll with like an him. explanation you're, you're... for why he voted the way he did. Total transparency candidate. Radical. Yeah. Radical. The thing I thought was really cool were the number of uh, people elected who were business candidates. I mean, people who have actually been out there in the world. They know how to uh, make a name out. some names. Who's okay, decided? so, you know, look, Steve Sutherland down in Florida knows what it means to hire people, knows what it means to fire people, knows what it means to make payroll. Uh, you look at Rick Snyder, Michigan, ran a computer company. He just became governor up there. Uh, Vicki Hartzler who beat Ike Skelton, a big guy in Congress, and she and her husband own a small business. They sell farm equipment. Stephen Fincher, down in Tennessee, this guy actually climbed off his tractor. He is a farmer and ran for Congress and won. So real world experience, not the lawyers you normally see, but guys who actually know how things work and are going to bring that sensibility to Congress. I think it's also interesting to follow people how they won in addition to what they ran on. Uh, and since the congressman is being, uh, is being polite, uh, about his son or discreet, I will uh, say that the way that Rand Paul won is fascinating. He ran against the Republican establishment explicitly. Mitch McConnell tried to support his uh, opponent in the primary election, and he ran a principled Tea Party-ish candidacy and one going away. Everyone said he was going to lose okay. after he won the primary. We've already forgotten that, uh, that, oh, you know, that, that the Tea Party screwed it up for the Republican Party. Well, that didn't turn out to be true. He has power in his independence right now. And Marco Rubio down in Florida, uh, when he gave his acceptance uh, speech, said that this is not a victory for the Republican Party. That was very interesting. This is a wake-up call to the Republican a Party. A second chance. A second chance, a lifeline. And I, I, people who are saying, sounding those notes are people who we should be following. Well, thank you, Matt Welch and Kimberly Strassel. Thank you. A senator once said, I met your wife the other day. and. 
confused our names, that, uh, but we are not related here. It's not even spelled the same. And Congressman Paul, congratulations to you again, and good for you. I, having worked at ABC, I know what it's like to try to argue these ideas when no one around you agrees. Uh, you've done it longer and harder and more effectively than anyone.